Hey everyone, it's Patriot Nurse here again, and in this segment, I wanted to talk with you very briefly about how to construct a medical kit with a budget of $50. Now, let me start off here with saying this is for people who don't have anything, like they really don't have anything, and they're trying to, how do I best prioritize and spend my money based on what I most readily anticipate happening? And let me give a word of warning here about some people who I think probably mean well but are very misguided in their videos on YouTube and that is they say if you only have X amount of dollars then you better buy quick cloth that's the most important thing I wholeheartedly vehemently disagree with that and I'll tell you why because if you have small children or even if you're not even if you're not a parent let's say that you acquire an upper respiratory infection and it goes into pneumonia and you end up dying or having to be hospitalized because of pneumonia quick clot will not have helped you in any way shape or form on any of the pathway to that disease so that's why I say if you've only got fifty dollars and you're trying to think of how do I best prioritize how to spend it this is how okay and it's based on three things one upper respiratory infection two diarrhea and three general wound care and skin integrity maintenance okay these three things are going to be what kills most people worldwide they already diarrhea is the number one killer of children in the third in the third world country period countries period because they don't have access to anything to stop it the other thing is upper respiratory infections okay so this is why i've devoted the time i have to this so we'll go ahead we shall we shall charge forth and continue and i'll go right along and show you what i've got here so wound care wound care the first things we've got here are this was six dollars at my local scrubs um slash power chair dealer healthcare place etc and these are four by fours they're sterile gauze four by fours okay these are used for absorbency and like padding of wounds in general band-aids here get you a bunch of them and here's telfa pads non-adherent sterile pads and they're they're three by fours here that's that's their size and there are a hundred of these online for eight dollars at shopmedvet.com i'm a big fan of that place because I, I cannot find anywhere else that gives you as good a deal and here we've got isopropyl alcohol these were about a dollar and a quarter a piece and then the hydrogen peroxide those were less than a dollar a piece now, of course, isopropyl alcohol is used for general disinfecting of, of topical wounds, skin wounds, etc. Hydrogen peroxide does the same type of thing, but what you can do is to make a solution of it, dilute it in water, and then gargle it if you have some kind of tooth abscess, etc. Because without penicillin, you're going to have some rough times if you've got an abscess. So just, just use that if, if you've got nothing else. Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Miracle worker cures everything well I don't know what to call it cure but alleviates the symptoms of yeast infections stomach upset acid indigestion etc just google its uses folks it's got a zillion of them that's a great if you can't buy very much I would I would definitely try and focus and get and get some of the apple cider vinegar here we've got ibuprofen Tylenol and Benadryl you should be storing at least um, one bottle of Tylenol and one bottle of an NSAID. I prefer ibuprofen just because um, it doesn't have some of the contraindications that Advil, or excuse me, that aspirin does, especially with children, and um, and it, it doesn't have some of the toxicity issues when it expires like aspirin does. These are good for pain, for early intervention with sprains etc to prevent swelling like this ibuprofen here is but also it's good for bringing down fevers it's an antipyretic it's a fever reducer over here we got benadryl get you some of that because it's good from everything from off-label usage uh, to treat nausea um, insomnia general sedation and relief of seasonal allergies and then over here we've got tape and, and a flashlight with a flashlight you're going to use that to of course assess kids throats to see if they're getting inflamed but also to check people's neurological status that's why they shine lights in people's eyes is to check their pupils because the pupils are kind of the litmus test of head trauma so and here we've got Kotex here I have not included that in the cost because I assume that most married men who are living with their wives and most women have that anyway it's very cheap and it's a heck of a lot um, easier to obtain than surgery pads slash abdominal pads and they work about as good so go ahead and get you some of those mucinex generic mucinex and halls if you can store nothing else for upper respiratory infections store mucinex because it will help keep 
mucus from pulling in people's lungs and in the lower lobes of the lungs, that's where most of the alveoli are concentrated. The alveoli are those little sacs that allow for perfusion of oxygen into the bloodstream. If you've got mucus that pulls over those and, and deactivates them, I guess you would say, or interferes with their free functioning, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So that's why I say store the mucinex here. And then we've got generic modium, imodium, excuse me, um, and I, would, I wouldn't use it first line, like in the first 24 to 48 hours. Watch your children um, just to make sure they don't get dehydrated or show signs of dehydration, but that's kind of a post 48 hour type of thing. Um, and here's the Hall's cough drops. That's two, uh, the menthol slash eucalyptol. It is a cough suppressant, but it also helps soothe an itchy throat. So that's a good thing. It's a good multi-purpose type of, type of thing. Here we have hydrocortisone and we have triple antibiotic equipment and we have, this was a dollar at Big Lots and this is the kind of knock off Boudreaux's butt paste. Oh, this stuff is good. Um, the hydrocortisone here, let, let's focus, let's take a, a little side trip here on skin integrity. When your skin integrity is lost with either a scrape, a cut, uh, or a rash, your risk for infection is going to go higher. So maintain your skin integrity here. That's why I say these are the big three. The skin integrity, upper respiratory infections, and diarrhea. Okay, These are what end up killing a lot of people. So the hydrocortisone is good for alleviation of rashes, everything from poison ivy. And oh, by the way, if you're having some kind of allergic reaction to poison ivy, hydrocortisone plus ibuprofen plus Benadryl. Okay, and uh, here we have the triple antibiotic ointment. The triple antibiotic ointment is going to be, after you've cleaned a wound, you've cleansed it, you're going to apply it usually um, and then put a band-aid over it like for a, a scratch, a cut, etc. And then here the Boudreaux's butt paste because if you're out doing patrol duty or whatever, you're going to get chafed probably and you don't, want, you don't want to lose your skin integrity, okay? It'll probably get red and irritated. Also the area around your bottom too if you're walking a lot. Um, you don't want that to get infiltrated with fecal matter or anything, so go ahead and use the zinc oxide here um, as a good barrier, uh, a skin protectant to keep urine, which is highly acidic and irritated, irritative um, to, to wounds around that area. That, that's, that's a good thing to have, okay? And it just increases your quality of life because everybody's miserable when they have chafing. Um, and then we have some gloves. Gloves are going to be important. This is, I want to say this is about $6 for 100 of these. Preventing infection when you're dealing with people is, is, is key. Preventing infection with yourself, maintaining your own skin integrity, but also other people's. So if you don't have access to sterile gloves and you end up needing them, just, just do the best you can. Wash your hands really, really well. Let them air dry and then, and then put on some gloves. Just, uh, I would, if you can, I would get a gallon sized Ziploc bag and then after you open this, keep it inside the Ziploc bag. Keep it covered and zipped up so that way you're not having different um, stuff encounter like bacteria or, or uh, dirt, etc. That way you're not exposing your box of gloves to it if, if you don't have access to anything else. And then here we've got the instant cold packs. These are important. Even They're about a dollar a piece, but these are important because early, early, early intervention is going to be key in pretty much every disease process I can think of. So if you have a sprain or whatever, getting cold on it as soon as you can and giving the person ibuprofen, those are going to be the things that are going to help facilitate a more quick healing time and also just decrease in pain and general maintenance of, of the body, etc. And also here we have a, a thermometer to monitor uh, temperatures, especially in small children, because when kids, little kids, when their temperature goes up too high, they can have a seizure, okay, and you don't want to be dealing with that. They're called febrile seizures febrile seizures, and you want to try and avoid that. <laughs> and then here we have ace wraps, okay? Um, they're about 50 cents a piece on shopmedvet.com. They're the three inch ones, and I recommend them because you can use them for pretty much any joint. They're, they're easily tailored uh, to, the, to the different joints, so, and that way you get the most bang for your buck. So, in conclusion today, um, what I have showed you, I hope to be probably the most wide-ranging applications for a limited budget and this is what I most readily anticipate and we'll try and do one here later about a um, hundred dollars a hundred dollars budget for a for a medical kit so for now this is Patreon Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later bye